All right, I wanted to attack the idea of two objects connected by a string to where they're in a system and how to draw free body diagrams for those. Because as I've said multiple times, the free body diagram in Newton's second law problems, that's where you live and die. If you get the free body diagrams right, the rest is pretty much just algebra. Okay, It might get long, it might get hairy, or it might be short and sweet. One way or another, it's just algebra. If you can get the free body diagram right, you're understanding the physics. So I've set up three scenarios, and I want to show off, uh, or I want to show you exactly what to do free body diagram. I'm trying to give a few examples of this. So scenario one here, I have two masses connected by a string. So I got uh, big M mass and little m mass connected by a string or a rope over a pulley. All right, now I'm expecting big mass M to win. So I'm expecting big mass to go down and little mass to go up. So the entire system is rotating this way. All right, so I'm, let's actually put, I'm expecting the entire system to rotate like this right here. Now, I'm going to label all the forces on big mass M. Remember, whenever I'm doing free body diagrams, I do a free body diagram for each object individually in the system. So this, this system has two objects in it. I need two different free body diagrams. On mass M, I have force of gravity going down, force of gravity specifically on that big mass M, and I have tension going up, T, because there's a rope, right, holding it up. Um, whenever I see a rope, I'm putting tension in. Um, notice also, I'm going to make force of gravity larger than tension just because I'm expecting it to rotate to the left. If I'm wrong, that's okay. I would just get a negative acceleration for what I'm calculating, but never mind all that. Little mass m. All right, I have force of gravity going down, and I expect my tension going up to be larger than the force of gravity going down. That's why the little mass m is going to go up. It's going to accelerate up, right? All right, so now let's pick positive and negative. I'm choosing, I'm saying this system is going to rotate around like this. So I'm going to call down for the big mass positive and up for the big mass negative. Reason for that is I'm expecting this thing to rotate to the left, okay? Um, which then I need to apply the exact same principles to the little mass. Now, now the, your first initial reaction is going to be, okay, that means down is positive and up is negative no matter what. Well, that's not the case here. Um, it's all about how the system is rotating. If the system rotating this way, I'm calling positive, which for the little mass is going up. Up is positive for the little mass here because that, that's the way the system's rotating and down, so negative would be a rotation the other way, right? Um, negative would be the rotation coming back around, so negative uh, is going to be down for the little mass. Let me come back in and label this on the picture to maybe help us understand. I called rotating coming around to the left here counterclockwise positive, and everything rotating to the left negative, which then would meant for the little one going down is negative and up is positive. Notice how for the two masses they are reversed simply because of the system idea. All right, another example, specifically number two over here in blue. I'm expecting the little mass here to accelerate downwards, pulling the big mass across the table. In other words, I'm assuming the little mass would overcome whatever force of friction there might be. So I'm going to assume this, this surface has friction right now. So I'm going to say when the system goes this way, because that's what I'm expecting to have happen, I'm going to call that positive. And if the system somehow or another went back the other way, for some odd reason the big mass traveled backwards across the table and lifted the little mass up, which is impossible unless there was another force pushing it, I'm going to call that negative. And based upon that, I'm going to choose my positives and negatives for my free body diagram. Now, j just before we even get started, you should go ahead and be able to see that for the little mass, down is positive up is negative, and for the big mass, right is going to be positive and left is going to be negative. All right, so let's do our free body diagram. For the big mass, I've got tension going to the right. It's on a surface, so I have normal force going up, right? Whenever there's something resting on a surface, you have normal force. We're on Earth, so there's always gravity going down. And if I consider friction here, there would be friction going the opposite way from uh, the way I'm expecting it to accelerate, and I'm expecting it to accelerate to the right. 
Now choosing positive and negative, right? I said to the right is positive for this thing because that's the way I'm expecting it to accelerate. Left negative, I'm gonna call up positive and down negative. And in the y-axis, since it's not connected by a string there, you can choose whatever to be positive and negative you'd like, right? Now, on the little mass, I've gotta have force of gravity going down and tension going back up. No normal force here because the little mass isn't resting on a surface, right? And I actually should make the force of gravity larger than the tension because I am expecting this thing to accelerate downwards here. Now, whenever I'm choosing, now I'm choosing positives and negatives. I said that whenever the system, whenever the big mass is going to my right, aka the system is rotating like this, clockwise, right? The, the big mass goes to the right, which means the little mass goes down. I'm calling that positive. So I'm going to call down here positive. Uh, and that also means uh, whenever I'm going counterclockwise, that's negative, which for the little mass, with the big mass went to the left negative, the little mass would go up, right? So I'm going to be, I, I have to call up negative here for the little mass. All right, one last scenario that I want to do, scenario number three, uh, and I have a big mass on a ramp, okay, on a ramp with angle theta. Uh, and, and something that I haven't taught you yet, don't worry too much about this. I just want to worry about system positive, system negative, free body diagrams. But for the big mass, if you were on a ramp, you would actually want to tilt your axis. Don't worry about that right now. Just go ahead and go, oh, okay, sure, whatever. He'll, he'll, tell, he'll tell me about that later. So here, um, what forces do I have acting on the big mass? Well, I have the tension going up the ramp. So I tilted my axis to where it was perfectly aligned with the ramp. So I have tension going up the ramp. I have force of friction pulling back down the ramp, right? Gravity would always go straight down. And normal force always goes perpendicular to the surface. And I hope uh, those sort of things should have rang a bell. We'll go over ramps later, so don't worry too much about that. What we're really caring about is tension and system positive, system negative. I'm going to guess this thing is going to rotate like this. So I'm going to call clockwise positive and counterclockwise negative. So for the big mass, that means I'm expecting it to accelerate, if you will, up the ramp, kind of to the right and up the ramp. So I'm going to call the way tension's going positive and the way friction's going negative. Now, by the way, um, if it was going down the ramp, uh, obviously friction would be going along the same axis as tension because if it was sliding down the ramp, remember friction always opposes the direction of motion. All right, so uh, and then I'll call up positive and down negative on this other axis here. Now, for the little mass, now the little mass, I have tension going up, right? And I have force of gravity going down. And I'm expecting it to rotate clockwise. I'm expecting the little mass to actually accelerate downwards. And according to how I have it rotating, right, clockwise, positive, that would be the little mass going down here. So I'm calling down positive and up negative, counterclockwise negative, which would be taking the little mass up. So you have to think about how the two masses move in connection because really they're one system. You can't just label them positive and negative separate from each other because more than likely, in fact almost guaretiedly, what you're going to have to do is solve for something in one of the masses and then substitute that in because in the algebra the big bridging gap is the tension in the ropes. So it is the tension because these tensions, these T's and these systems are the same because it's the exact same rope, okay? If it's the same rope, then you can solve and substitute in for tension, allowing you to solve further. All right, I hope this helped you try to figure out system positive, system negative, and free body diagrams with two objects. And it really is the system positive, system negative thing. is a, It's a new concept uh, because obviously we haven't dealt with more than uh, one object. Uh, I think you're going to be fine on this. Uh, just stu study it if need be, soak it all in, and we'll continue to go over it in class.